Well, I was never too optimistic about the prospect of Flint residents ever getting justice after they were poisoned, but now we have confirmation that there will indeed be no justice because the charges against their former governor, Rick Snyder, who poisoned them, have been dismissed. As Ed White of HuffPost reports, a judge had no authority to issue indictments in the Flint water scandal. The Michigan Supreme Court said Tuesday, wiping out charges against former Governor Rick Snyder, his health director, and seven other people. It's an astonishing defeat for Attorney General Dana Nessel, who took office in 2019, got rid of a special prosecutor, and put together a new team to investigate whether crimes were committed when lead contaminated Flint's water system in 2014 through 2015. State laws authorize a judge to investigate subpoena witnesses and issue arrest warrants as a one-person grand jury, the Supreme Court said. But they do not authorize the judge to issue indictments, the court said in a 6-0 to zero opinion. So in essence, um, Dana Nessel, the attorney general, completely bungled this case, and we'll get to that, but it's been a while, so I want to jog your memory if you haven't been following this case uh, as close lately. But this video is from January 20th of 2016. This is from CNN, and they explain what happened to the residents of Flint. Melissa Mays says the ominous change in the water was particularly noticeable at bath time. My youngest would tell me, Mom, it's yellow and it's a filmy, gross, foamy thing, and it would smell like open sewer. But we were being told we're still getting used to the new system. It's safe. It's okay. But it wasn't okay. Far from it. Flint's tap water was laced with dangerous levels of lead. The state knew about it and did nothing. The trouble began two years ago when the state decided to switch Flint from Detroit's drinking water to a new system. But the new system wouldn't be ready for two years. In the meantime, to save money, they switched to the Flint River water. Three, two, one. That first decision turned out to be a mistake, as did nearly every step the state took after it. Michigan's Department of Environmental Quality shoulders much of the blame, what a preliminary task force report calls an abysmal public response. At the time, the state agency told Flint it didn't have to add an anti-corrosive agent to the water, saying it was not necessary until two six-month monitoring periods had been conducted. In other words, they were willing to wait a year to see whether the water was safe. All the while, highly corrosive river water flowed through the city's lead pipes, leaching lead and other dangerous metals into the water supply, and what came out of the tap in many homes was toxic. Almost immediately, residents started complaining. Their water was brown. Some people developed rashes, became sick. Early tests revealed fecal coliform bacteria. So the city and state officials added chlorine to the water supply and told people to boil their water. Both mistakes, which can actually increase the level of lead. I built this place by tax At city meetings, residents were repeatedly told the water was safe. We found the worst lead and water contamination that I have seen in 25 years, and believe me, I've seen a lot. Residents didn't find out about the lead until this man stepped in. Mark Edwards is a Virginia Tech researcher who tested the water early last year. It was very scary to see the levels of lead that were hazardous waste levels of lead coming out of her tap water. That's right. The lead levels in one home were so high, water from the tap could be considered hazardous waste. Now, since then, so much more has been uncovered. Not just a criminal conspiracy involving the former governor, Rick Snyder, but a cover-up attempt. Deleting emails. There was a lot here. And so there was a case that was teed up against him, but then Dana Nessel came in and she fired everyone. Now, Jordan Sheridan, who's been following this story for years, put together a really long and comprehensive thread. And he explains how basically this is the fault of Dana Nessel, the attorney general of Michigan. He writes, reminder, from 2016 through 2018, an independent Flint prosecutor and lead investigator, former head of Detroit FBI office, had built a widespread criminal prosecution charging 15 state and city officials with crimes ranging from involuntary manslaughter to financial fraud. As we broke, that team was building a case against Snyder for involuntary manslaughter and had compiled evidence showing Snyder helped cover up deadly legionnaires outbreak that killed many in Flint, yet Nessel fired the special prosecutor and chief 
chief investigator and the entire original criminal prosecution team based on them, quote, not securing all the evidence. They never gave any evidence for that claim, and my reporting indicates it was never true and Nestle got rid of them for political reasons. In addition to the fire team building a case against Snyder for involuntary manslaughter as I broke, they were also building a major racketeering RICO case against state officials for financial fraud that led to poisoning of Flint. They were months away from filing charges when Nestle fired them. After firing the original prosecution team for dubious reasons, Nestle then inserted prosecutors who had zero experience investigating or prosecuting widespread financial fraud. Her team didn't even properly debrief with the outgoing fired team of prosecutors who has built the case for three years and had all of the institutional knowledge of a complicated investigation that had been investigating the governor, his top officials, his health department, his environmental department, and local Flint officials. Nestle's team basically restarted from scratch for no real reason. Nestle and her team badly bungled a case that included the following bombshells we broke. Snyder's top advisor and best friend offered payoffs to sick Flint residents and told them Snyder was aware. Prosecutors concluded Snyder and his top officials had covered up the deadly waterborne Legionnaires outbreak weeks before his 2014 gubernatorial re-election and had obtained an avalanche of Snyder's phone calls they concluded show this. Snyder's top officials, press secretary, top health department officials, had their phones erased soon before the launch of the Flint criminal investigation in 2016. Several had all of their text messages for 2015 through October of 2015 erased, the period Flint used Flint River. Snyder refused to provide prosecutors with key documents and governor's briefings he received for many years. Snyder's evasiveness potentially would have led to obstruction of justice charges. Top officials in Snyder's administration and local Flint officials were soon to be charged with major financial fraud linked to a bond deal that led to Flint joining the KWA water pipeline and using Flint River while it was under construction. So long story short, they were ready to file charges. There could have been justice until Dana Nessel came in and then fired everyone for no compelling reason whatsoever. So now because of that AG's incompetence, Rick Snyder is going to literally get away with murder or involuntary manslaughter, but he killed people. His decision as governor led to people dying, getting poisoned, and he's just going to get away with this, scot-free. This is outrageous. And if you're not concerned with Flint, understand that this can happen in your area as well, because there are a lot of areas in the United States that are vulnerable to a crisis similar to Flint's. And for those of you wondering, Flint still, contrary to popular belief, does not have clean drinking water, because even though they replace the pipes, well, the pipes that lead to the houses are still corroded because of the lead that flowed through them. So the older pipes that uh, had lead going through them that poisoned people, those still haven't been replaced. You have to replace all of them. So, I mean, the situation has improved somewhat, but at the end of the day, they still don't have clean drinking water. And the message that this sends to other governors is that they can now do whatever they want. They can literally poison their own residents to save a buck or two, and there's going to be no charges. In the one case that there could have been accountability for an elected official, you have some idiot attorney general come in and fuck it all up for no reason. It's just infuriating, but I can't pretend as if I'm surprised because I was never really optimistic, as I stated at the beginning of this video. But just when it seemed like maybe there was some hope, of course, that's all dashed. So here we are. That's the latest update. No charges for Rick Snyder, the governor who literally poisoned 100,000 people, most of which people of color. They're still dealing with the ramifications of lead poisoning till this day. But no justice for them. America is an embarrassingly pathetic country where we let our public officials do whatever they want, get away with murder, and um, nobody's surprised by it. Do you enjoy watching independent news shows like The Humanist Report, The Rational National, and The Majority Report, but oftentimes YouTube doesn't deliver our videos to your subscription box? Well, I've got a solution for you. It's called the Opt Out app, available right now in the iOS App Store, coming soon to Android. Opt Out is an app made by and for progressives where they take all of the most popular independent news shows and they put them in one convenient location. You'll find all your favorites on there, like The Humanist Report, The Rational National, The Majority Report, and the app is updated multiple times per day, so your news feed is constantly constantly up to date. If you enjoy watching independent media, this is the app to get. Download it today.